in an increasingly connected world, um, vulnerabilities in systems get more and more important in even the scanning or testing for it. And in this video, we want to highlight uh, pen testing and its unique challenges. My name is Jürgen from ITK. So Sebastian, I'm happy to answer your question. Feel free to ask me everything. Yeah, Jürgen, I'm happy that you're in the house today. You're one of my favorite pen testers uh, I've met in my career. So um, it's really inspiring to, to have you here in this uh, talk. I have a lot of questions about penetration testing. I have a very first one. What is the goal of penetration testing from an abstract perspective? Okay, let's say before I want to answer this question, um, there's another question we should ask ourselves and how penetration tests uh, fits to the verification and validation process of a, of a product. And um, if you think about security testing, pen testing should be a part of a non-functional security testing in the product security process. And the main goal of um, pen test is to identify vulnerabilities and exploit them um, to determine the extent which an attacker can um, um, attack your assets and in, in your company, for example. So um, one point, of course, is to reveal uh, yeah, at most possible um, vulnerabilities, but um, a pen test can only show the presence of the vulnerabilities, but not of their absence. That's, that's super interesting. And I, I know since I had the chance to look over your shoulders uh, during your pen tests, um, it's pretty amazing uh, how all the consoles and scripts are working uh, for a pen testing uh, issue, right? Um, but from your perspective, as one who owns all the tools and, and knows what to do, what are the real challenges of a penetration test? I would say the most challenging aspect is also the most difference to other security testing and that is the explorative um, approach. So if you think about um, diverse software combinations and the state space uh, results of that, um, you have a lot of things where you have to look on. So um, that's why pen testing is so complex because not only uh, outdated software could have vulnerabilities even software which you think is up to date could have vulnerabilities because it's misconfigured. So that's why a pen tester should have a look at several aspects. And additionally, if you think about embedded pen testing where um, custom software is, is used, you have also the problem that you need a lot of um, unique techniques or um, tools which have to be developed, which makes a big effort in that test testing uh, area. That's, that's a so interesting uh, area of cybersecurity. So um, let's imagine I have a product that I want to have a pen test for. What would be the typical way to conduct such a test? Can you, can you give me some insights on that? How to start? What's the process? What's the approach? I would say that's not the only or the one way. So it really depends on the customer and the project. But you could say there are two you know, mainly um, ways you can go. The one is the black box text where you say, okay, the attacker, or you feel as an attacker, so um, you have no knowledge about the system and you try to identify the tech surface of the product without having no knowledge. So the other one is the white box where you have all information, even source code, for example. And we also recommend this type of testing because you have more insights in the product which leads to a higher identification of vulnerabilities. And as you know, the pen test should identify as most as possible of weaknesses. So it makes sense to, um, to have this white box approach. So what would you say? Um, I, I think test coverage and all the KPIs we know from general testing is, is nothing applicable for, for penetration testing quality assurance. What, what do you think is quality of the penetration test and how can it be assessed? What, what is your opinion on that? I think that is a really hard 
question or a big challenge. Um, if you think on a customer view, for example, if you have no previous pen test scene, so it's hard to evaluate. Um, one point is, as you already mentioned, that there are no metrics for completeness or for quality. So um, we think that one important point in pen testing is the documentation. So um, the documentation should show the vulnerabilities in, in a detailed way and even in a way that you can reproduce it. So that it's clear for you that there is really um, um, a vulnerability. So one important thing on that is that the tester should show his confidence for a true positive so that a customer can really focus on the real uh, vulnerability and do not have a false positive and put info in that. So an additional point for a first indication of a pen tester does his work well, I would say is uh, some references, uh, project references or um, some certifications. For the certifications, there's one point I would say we have a look on it because it should be an exam or certification that had a high practical uh, content in it. So if you have a certification which is only related to multiple choice answers, it's not clear how good such a pen tester will be. Understandable, understandable. Um, yeah, Jürgen, thanks for being here today. And uh, I'd like to ask you, what is your take home message for our YouTube subscribers and viewers of the video? So I would say, let's join together in the pen testing. It's a really interesting area. And if you have questions or further information needed, just give a hint to us or uh, just mail us. Cool. Thanks a lot, Jürgen. Uh, looking forward to meet you for one of our next interviews and videos and to see you again on this YouTube channel. Thanks, Sebastian.